Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the catchphrase in Power Query. Now, the pun was obviously intended, but just as the way that you have try and the otherwise keyword in Power Query, which lets you do things like if error function in Excel, just as that, we now have the try and the catch uh, phrase or keyword in Power Query. The catch lets you catch the errors in case the errors are found. Now, if you haven't really taken a look at the try and the otherwise, which I have done a few weeks back, I suggest that you take a look at that video and I'll be building on top of that. Now, no further ado, let's take a look at what the hell is a try and a catch in Power Query. All right, people, in this Excel, I'm just working with a small data. I'm using that as a case to explain you what is try and catch. Please take a look at this two columnar data. We have three columnar actually. We have the date, we have the units and the price, and I would want to find the sales. The problem, however, is that the sales is going to be the multiplication of the units into price, but price has got a bunch of errors. Now, I want to take decisions based on the errors. Now, if the error happens to be the NA error, then the price is 10. If the error happens to be the div error, then the price is five for any other error that you might have the price happens to be zero right how do you actually do that in power query now in power query you can certainly take decisions based on conditions or you apply if logic based on values of a cell but how are you going to apply uh, if conditions based on the error value in power query let's see how can we do that all right, the data has been loaded in Excel, Excel Power Query, and we'll start from there. You can see that as soon as I load the data in Excel, the price column gives me a bunch of errors for all the cells that were marked with any sort of error, be it a div error, a name error, an NA error, any of that errors. Now, let's just try to write maybe the try. Now, in case you haven't taken a look at my past video on the try and otherwise, once again, I suggest that you please take a look at that video. I'm just gonna swift through the try and the otherwise and quickly jump over to the try and catch, but please take a look. Now, I'm just gonna go over to the add column columns tab and create a custom column let me just try to solve it and in the custom column I'm just gonna write let's say the try keyword so I'm just gonna say hey why don't you try evaluating the column which column the price column uh, I'm just gonna feed that if that column gets evaluated good enough otherwise I'm gonna say that please write the value 10 right let's just see what happens I'm just gonna click on okay and I get the value 10 but the problem however is that all across the cells which had the error uh, these ones these ones there is the value which is marked as 10 but this may not be right because we had conditions based on the error values let's take a look at the error value right here this is a div value so this was supposed to be 5 and the next one was the name error name any other error apart from NA and div was supposed to be zero. So this obviously is not really the right output that we are getting right here. We need to obviously change the approach and maybe try to use something else. All right, let's just try to change the work here and not really use the try and the otherwise keyword, but only go with the try keyword. The try keyword has the property to also capture the error. Let's just go with that. I'm gonna open up the custom formula that I have created and get rid of the otherwise from here, delete that and click on okay. Now I do get a record. Let's just open up the record as to what is there in the record. If I open up that record, I'm gonna find that there are three columns, has error, value in the error. Let's open all of them. Now, because these two cells had the error, the corresponding has error gives you a true which is a boolean that means the error was found in these two cells okay pretty good now obviously because the cells had error the value returned was null and there was also an error record that has been found right here now i want you to take a pause at this particular point in time what i'm going to explain you right now is going to be helpful to us when we understand the try and the catch keyword all right once i open up the error uh, column right here which is nothing but the record you're going to find that the error column has got five different fields or five different columns now every error record has got these five columns let me just show you so if i open this up this particular column right here you're going to find that we have three different messages so message message format and message parameter there is a reason and there is a detail so these five different columns are always there for the record level errors now let's just go open up these different errors that we have and we'll see that what errors were captured when once power query was trying to evaluate the price column now if i just maybe click on this right here I get these five columns let me open up these and I'm gonna see that here we have the reason we have the message the detail the format and the parameters now obviously once the errors have been captured now I can very well go ahead and pick up the errors from here and write maybe an if condition 
picking the name of the error div error 5 name error 0 na error price s10 i can write these if conditions now because i have been able to capture these errors in a cell and the if condition now becomes easy the problem however is that there is going to be a lot of work that i'll have to do or open up these columns to be able to get to the error what the error was that is exactly what the catch function lets you do. Now, let's just rework all of the work that we have done and let's just try to solve this in a more simpler way using the try and the catch. All right, let's just start again, shall we? I'm gonna go over to the add columns tab and create a custom column and this time not really write the try and the otherwise or the try but write try and catch. Take a look, I'm just gonna call this column as new price and I'm gonna say something like, hey, why don't you try evaluating the price column? So try and price and after that i'm going to not write the otherwise but i'm going to write the catch so the way that you write catch is something like this you write the catch phrase or the keyword and then within that you declare a single variable now the name of the variable could be anything but don't write the full word error it could be e a b c e r r anything but not the full word error right so e r r or e or whatever and this is the variable that i have declared now i create that as a function and like i said that any particular error as a record has got five columns. Now this particular record that we are trying to pull out, which is nothing but the error, would have five different columns. What were the five columns? We had the reason, we had the message, we had the detail, the message parameter, and the message format. These were the five columns, and let's just try to pull out maybe the message detail. So I'm just gonna maybe uh, write error, and I'm just gonna write, let's say, message, and I'm just gonna close the, the brackets right here, and I'm just gonna say, okay, let's just see what we get now. What we have been able to get is a single column, which is where it tried to evaluate the price column because two did not have the error, so it just gave me two. But because the second cell did have the error, and error produces five different columns as we saw it, it actually extracted the message uh, column of uh, the error that we had and we are now getting this particular message. Now, what we would be able to do in this very function that we are writing is that we can wrap around this in the if function and if this actually gives us the error, if the message is there, then we can just take a remedial action and just do something about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and complete my function and what I'm gonna do is add a little if function right here all right, the if function has been completed and you can see that I have been able to capture the error using the catch phrase and I'm just extracting the message and I'm just saying that if the error is equal to this particular phrase, then just give me the value 10, otherwise 5, otherwise a 0. That's all about it and I just click on OK and now I have been able to get this new price column using which I would be able to capture the sales value. Now this is obviously a corner case. It's very rare that we get to capture the errors and take decisions based on that. But if you're writing a complicated query and you're getting certain types of errors and those errors are helpful to be able to take conditions forward to be able to make the query work this is certainly a very very good way to solve such problems all right that was all about it in the end i'd like to give you two recommended readings to build up your knowledge further one is the official documentation of microsoft on try and the catch that was just released a few days ago and the second one is one of the articles of the M Primer series from Ben Guibardo, especially on errors and trying to understand not only just the try and the catch, but try, try and otherwise, and a bunch of techniques around handling efficiently the errors that happen in Power Query. That's been it. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. And maybe if this was a bit too technical, let me know if you have any questions around this. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye.